All right, I'm going to get this thing started. Okay. Okay. I love my belt. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, whole screen like a moron. Here we go. Everybody see everything? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right where we left off last week. Exactly where we left off. I'm really glad I saved. Um, so we've kind of come to a consensus where where we're going to get into the fab portion now. And this, I, I predict this is going to be a lot of back and forth because there's a way I did things the first year. There's a way I did things the second year. And, you know, Braden's got his own process. And I, I think we're all going to learn something. And uh, I'm going to go with JLC because I'm comfortable with that interface and I won't be flailing as much, but they're not that different. Ordering from Osh Park, I didn't feel like like anything was weird about it. You know, most of it's fairly intuitive. Once you've done it once, you can do it again. Does Osh Park do um, PCBA? I don't remember because that's I didn't order something completed from there. Yeah, I didn't think they did. <laughs> So. so where do we start? We start with like, let's, let's, we start with validation, right? Make sure that everything's working and. Yeah. You're going to have a problem right now with two, with two edge cuts. So you might want to get rid of the tree H1. Yeah. That, that's just there for testing shit. Yep. Exactly. All right. Where's my, oh, your zoom stuff is over my bar. Okay. Do, 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 do. Right click, fill all. Oh yeah, B, B. That's so pretty. My first, the the first, the the, the tree of life. I did not do a ground pour. All the grounds were routed. Oh wow! Because I didn't, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, and I knew that worked, so I did that. You know, there's also now I, I'm seeing more and more boards where they're doing a hatched ground fill. I haven't played with that yet, but why it looks it looks cool. But it's something you don't see uh, once once the board's covered up. Why? What's the no, what's the benefit? It. You see it. Oh, so it, it shows up as like texture on the board. Yeah. Okay. It, it it shows up like a you know a waffle pattern kind of thing. Hmm. Wonder what the purpose of that is. Just for variety, just because they can. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if it has an advantage in RF, but all the boards that I've seen use it are it's for aesthetics. All right. So we'll start with I, you know, before we get into fab, we do a DRC to make sure we didn't miss anything stupid. Actually, I think you may have. Is your Pico on the front or the back? of the board. I'm 99% sure it's on the front. Why? Okay. It's as long as it's where you want it. I mean, I, I'm not actually going to send this off to fab because this is, this is a useless board. I'm just going to go through the motions. Yeah. The, the um, question also is for anybody who is planning to send their board off to fab, you probably want your Pico on the back as well as your battery on the back. And if you do that, then you need to make sure you've flipped your Pico and wire it accordingly. Why Why do we want it on the back? So it doesn't show. Personal preference. <laughs> okay. I'm going to keep mine on the front just because uh, it's a test board. Oh, okay. If it's a test board, it makes no difference. But if you're if you're trying to build some sort of an ornament or gift or something, you might want it on the back. No yeah, I, I I went through that thought process and I, I realized that I don't want to make an ornament with a Pico. I would want something way smaller that did way less and is way cheaper. Can't get much cheaper than a Pico, but I get the rest of it. <laughs> like uh, an RP2040 instead of a Pico? No, right? no that that's, be, that's that, way too complicated. And that would be more expensive, actually. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I was, you know, thinking something like, you know, pick something STM, something, something simple. Yeah. You know? 
like the an eighty tiny eighty five if you could get them or I I have yeah, I have some are, in a drawer somewhere I could probably yeah. use those. Those are perfect. Yeah. Yeah, they're a lot of fun to play with. Yeah, yeah. So I ran DRC. Where did DRC go? I ran the DRC. Um, I got show errors, show warnings. I don't show exclusions. Um, I got no errors. Yay. Cool, cool, cool. And, you know, we, we've been through this, this board enough time. We know it's probably fine. Probably. And that's why we prototype to turn the probably into a holy shit. Um, so for me and, and Brayden, I, I hope you pipe in like consistently tonight, uh, because I, I want to compare how I do it to how you do it. Yeah, probably the best way to do it then is you do it, <laughs> and then we'll pause, and I'll either say, yep, that's exactly how I do it, or okay. here's an alternative. Okay. So let I'm, me jump in. I'm going from memory because it's been a few months. Um, I go for uh, uh, fabrication outputs and Gerber's. And I don't think I've ever changed anything on here. But I do hit generate drill files and generate map file, generate drill file, and then close. And then I choose an output directory. Where's my output directory going to be? Okay, so it's there. And I will make a directory for this because I like my Gerbers to be separate from all the rest of the crap makes it easier to zip it up. Uh, and once again, the zoom stuff's in the way. Okay. Select folder. Yes. And plot. All right. How's that compared to your process, Brad? I got to unmute. Um, so uh, most things are the same. So you want to make sure you've got front back copper, front back paste, front back silk, front back mask, edge cuts. And then if you're providing any notes to the fab, which in this case we're not, you typically put those on either your user drawings or your user comment layer. So that's all the same output directory. Yeah, you want to push all your Gerbers and drill files into a separate file because you're going to have to zip them up. Uh, generate the Gerber job file. You don't want that actually. It's not. It's not very useful. Contains info um, about the board and the list. Okay. Yeah, it, no one uses it that I know of. Um, everything else is fine. And then yeah, what I do is I go through the process of, you know, hit plot to generate all the Gerbers, and then immediately go over and generate the drill file. Complete okay. that and then close and close. And you've got a directory file with all of that content. And right. that's all from this phase that you do. Um, one thing that I tend to do at some point, um, and this becomes more important when I'm either creating my own custom footprints, as Kevin and I were talking about previously, or if I'm not sure I correctly chose the right footprints and stuff, I will at some point print out my board without fill uh, one to one. So it's, it prints out exactly the proportions it really is. First of all, you'll be surprised your board is smaller than you thought it was. <laughs> right. But then second, you can also, if you've got some of your components, you can just literally lay them on the piece of paper and see where they go. Um, it's more of a sanity check than anything, but uh, as far as, as the plot files and the drill files, uh, what, what Bob just did is exactly what I do. Um, I just don't generate the, uh, the job file. And yeah, anything extra that gets generated in there probably won't cause you any problems. It'll no, they'll, they'll just be ignore ignored. It. Yeah. They, they ignore it on their end. They know what, fi what, what Gerbers they require out of the set. So, I mean, you theoretically just click everything, um, but not a big deal. And it's kind of cool. I hadn't noticed this before because I don't look that closely at things, but there's a run DRC button right in this dialogue. So if you had forgotten up to this point, this will remind you, Hey, maybe I should check that out. Yep. And if you before haven't I done know. it, and mm -hmm. if you haven't done your flood fill, um, it'll ask you if you want to do it before you plot all this stuff out. 
So with things like the uh, resistors and the the push buttons and the uh, yep. um, uh, the the neopixels, do you have to source that through from their website, or will they just fill it with whatever? No, no. you will absolutely have to specify exact part numbers. Yeah, and we'll get to that in just a sec. Oh, there is one other file we need, Bob. Uh huh. So you can click close here. Yep. Go back to file, fabrication output, component placement. We need a bomb too, right? Yeah, but we're not ready. We don't have we don't have our parts figured out yet for our bomb. So what this step does, this creates a POS file. And what the POS file or the position file has, and there's a proper term for it, and I can never remember what it is, but basically this says, you know, uh, uh, D8 is located at this XY coordinate and it is rotated zero degrees or, you know, 90 degrees. By the way, that's one thing that we don't have on this board that we will need, Bob. What? We need the origin. What does that mean? So click close. Do I not want to generate position file yet? Not right now. Okay. Click close. Over on your right menu, you'll see the next to last icon there. It looks like a uh, an X Y set of yeah that thing right there. Place drill point. Yeah. So grab that and stick it in the lower left corner on the yellow. So literally on the yeah that you want to get that exact corner of your bingo right there. Perfect. And click. I have never done that before. Yeah, they can figure it out, but um, this makes things a ton easier. Um, it also is absolutely critical if I ever fab your boards. <laughs> now you can go generate your position file, and all the coordinates will be relative to that corner. I would imagine it's more important if you don't have a perfectly rectangular board. Um, it's actually important no matter what size and shape board it is. But I've never used it, and I've always my boards have always come well, out. Well, that's fine. because that's because JLC. What it'll do is it will generate it relative to I think like the upper left zero zero of the page, no of the page, and then oh. JLC will just have to. They'll figure big, it out. They'll do a big messy offset to correct it. That's all. We'll eyeball it on a screen, make it line up and go. <laughs> yeah, not quite. <laughs> um, so now you can go generate your position file. All right. So is everybody the... uh, absorbing? Do, do we need to slow down at all? Or No, I'm following again. along just fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then just generate position file, and it gets saved in the same directory, because by default it will use yep. that same directory you had before. Gerbers. Yep. Gerbers. And there you go. Generate and close. All right. So, so now to display's question. So my process was, first of all, I, I learned from, from doing this to go back and forth with JLC's parts list during the design process so I know what they are, right? Yeah. And then when it got time to submit it, I realized that JLC wants theirs in a very specific, you know, CSV type format with very specific columns. So what I would do is I would go out to JLC's website, download the sample, generate the the bomb and the position file from me and then open them both up and and mangle them to make them work and maybe braden has got a better process for that no i mean the first step is is to make sure that you've got the jlc part numbers right associated with all of it and i do all that over in the schematic okay so so i have not been doing that throughout this so that this is a perfect time to go do that yeah and we did touch upon the place that we're going to do most of this work in a previous video. So some of this will be familiar, or at least you'll find another familiar use for it. So if uh, once Bob's got JLC opened, or JCSC, it's, I don't know how you get to the parts that JLC PCB uses. I thought it was JCSC. Um, I thought I got under... <laughs> They probably have the two like the two sites linked together. They the have like a link on the top, I think. 
uh, resources and I think it's yeah assembly, assembly parts, parts library. library. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. So we go back and forth between you say the schematic and and the parts library. Yep. All right. So we'll just go through everything, right? These are these are one meg resistors, and we decided on an 0603 for that. So we would search. 0603, yes. Yeah. So we would like, it even tells you right here in the uh, sample in really faded letters an example of it. So we're going one meg 0603 and search. Sorry for, yeah, sorry for that. I had to kill a mouse. <laughs> He's been driving me nuts for like a week. So this is where it's more of an art than a science. You're looking for lots in stock. You're looking for a low price and you're looking for exactly what you want or very close to what you want. And a lot of this is is above my head as in the exact specs, you know, the, the, the voltages and, and whatnot. So sometimes I'll go back to my previous thing that I built and and look at those or sometimes i'll look at another thing because i don't always know what the right resistor or diode replacement is going to be if they don't have the one i want so um, there's an option uh it says extended part or basic part stick, there... stick with basic stick with basic if you can you can't always but if you can uh the... Yeah, it keeps the cost of, of them doing the assembly way down if you can avoid going to extended parts. Okay. Right. So for this purpose, for this application of this one meg resistor, do we care much about the specs? No, because I mean, we're using the I'm talking about what we're using the resistor for. For the oh, touch it's sensors. the one meg it's the one meg ohm for the for the touch things. Um, yeah. No, I mean it's it's. I'll be honest, in this particular case, this resistor is not very critical on its tolerances. So, you know. Can we go for this one that's 0. 0.0008 cents a piece? So typically the thing that's going to affect the price is. Um, oh, that it's an extended part. Right. Yeah, we want to avoid those if possible. So um, can you filter on basic yes. parts only? There is a checkbox right below the search there box. There we go. Thank you. Display your attention to detail will get you hired someday. <laughs> uh, the first one is an LED. I mean, we could use an LED, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't meet our specs. What? Right? Uh, the first one's an LED, not a, a resistor, I think. Sorry, never mind. Whatever. It is. Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. OK. Well, this is a lot cheaper anyway, so let's look at it and see if it's what we want. 100 milliwatt thick film resistor, 75 volts, 100 blah, 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 things I don't understand. One meg, 0603, good enough for me. It'll probably work. Oh, and it's going to roll? Yeah, actually, I think I've got that in stock. And there's <laughs> that's a, that's a over a million good. of them in stock, so that's good. So you, go. you take the JLC part number, and you need that. Where would we put that in the schematic to be useful? Am I still ah, going to have to extract it to the bomb? I was waiting for you to ask that question. So what I do is I go to, I got to, um, where's your menu? No, click cancel on this. Go to, I have to zoom in here. Go to tools. And, and, and edit symbol fields. And now what we have is we have a single table with everything that we need to fill out. Oh, good. That's way and useful so, to try to do it on the, on the. Yeah. And so what I actually do here is I go ahead and over on the left hand side, I click add field all the way, way over on the left okay. side. Yeah, down at the bottom, add field. LCSC part number or JLC PCB part number. What's LTSC? Uh, uh, LCSC is is JLC PCB's uh, component okay. sales thing. It's it's where you buy parts from them if you're just buying parts outright. Okay. 
And so now you can actually put the part number right in that column. So you can take the one meg, just paste it right in there. Okay. How did you how did you get the uh, part number on there? I'm struggling with from that. the web. I highlighted it, I copied it, and then I pasted it here. Yeah. And if you want, um, you can add more columns to it. So like if you wanted manufacturing part number, manufacturer's part number, or um, a real common one that a lot of people will do is um, they'll either add a column or they'll use the data sheet column and they'll stick the URL for the actual part number in there. Mm. Um, and that can be kind of handy as you go back to a project later and you go, um, I wonder if that part's still available or, you know, that kind of thing. You, just, you have a link immediately in this table, which yeah. makes life a lot easier. So, okay, so one meg. for whatever reason, what's that? It's pasting it in the cell beneath it for whatever reason, in the SW1, SW2. Strangely. That sounds like a um, operator malfunction. Uh, it's just uh, also known as a pepcac error. Yeah. I think it has the, I, I took the carriage return with it. That's why. Oh, okay. That'll do it. Um, I forgot what I was going to do. I was going to do something. Have the URL? No, I don't care. There was something. Anyhow, I guess I'll go get the next thing or a thing. Let's see if we can search on that. The TL3342. Oh, I hope, I hope, I hope. I have yeah, to so start over, don't I? No, just stuff it in that search box right there. Yeah. You don't think that's um, a and, filter? Oh, sorry, no, that is more. a filter. Sorry, you're right. It's it's the search box yeah. up top. Um, and so for those of those people who are fortunate enough to be working on a huge monitor, this is when it becomes really really convenient to be able to just simply put the JLC website on the you know left or right side of your monitor and put yeah. the spreadsheet and keycap on the other side and. Or if you're like me, who has multiple monitors, one here and one here, you can just have JLC here and then off yeah. on the side. I, I, yeah, and that works. That works great. I just I got rid of multi monitor years ago. I have a okay. forty two. I have a forty two inch four K now. So okay, so there are no TL thirty three forty two. There are no basic parts that match that. Um, What's a basic part versus an extended part? We just went through that. Yeah, so a basic part is a part that JLC has immediate access to. It's probably sitting on a feeder or on a real rack right in their manufacturing facility. An extended part has to be ordered and brought in, which means yeah. it's got to, somebody's got to place the order for it. Somebody's got to wait for it to arrive. Somebody's got to then inventory it against your job. Um, yeah. you know, so for instance, the way I would, if, you know, if, if I were doing a fab job for somebody, if they chose parts that I already have mounted on my pick and place machine, that's immensely easier for me to deal with than if I have to order a part, put it on a feeder, swap that feeder onto my machine, test calibrate the feeder, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. so. so this is where we get into the real fun part because they don't have what we want, right? They have something close tactile switch, but zero stock, even in the extended parts. These other things aren't the same thing at all. So we have to find a tactile switch that suits our needs and go back and edit, edit the schematic PCB, possibly the wiring if the fit changes, and then come back to this. Yeah. So what's a good... Uh, what do you recommend for a process for finding a new tactile switch? Are you familiar I'd, with the I'd tactile start, switch? Well, I would start with tactile switch SPST. Okay. And, SM, and then make sure you filter it for SMD. I don't think there's any uh, tactile switches that are basic parts for the thing, for the uh, flip switch. There are ones for the push buttons, though. Yeah, right now we're working on the push okay. buttons. 5.1 millimeter, 1.5 golden round button brick nogging. <laughs> That's the one, I think. There you go. That looks very similar to what we have. What I've got a drawer full of in the basement. Um, I think that'll work fine. Where did it go? 
I guess. Okay. So how would we match, make sure uh, the footprint matches what we yeah, have? Well, let's, yeah, let's do one. Yeah, we, uh, we can get to that in a second. Let's do one thing first. So go ahead and, you know, Bob, go ahead and update your uh, your component sheet. With the part number? Yep. Okay. And this is also, again, why at this point, I tend to grab the URLs because then I can get back to them quickly if for some reason something doesn't work out. Right. But you can search on part number also. So Yeah, I'm just yeah. having a URL. So to answer the question, how do you make this thing match? So what I do is go back to the part, click on the click on the data sheet. Hang it, take, take, hang on. Okay, go ahead. TS eleven eighty seven A. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that's not going to do any good because that is the footprint. You don't even know if you've got that footprint, which is Let's... exactly what Display was asking about. Right. Right. Okay. So, go go on. What were you saying? So I go and look at the data sheet. So I go back to JLC PCB right. or, or JCSC. And right on that page is the data sheet. So click that. <coughs> and this is, by the way, this is also what Kevin was talking about. How do you go and create a custom footprint? Well, everything you need to create a custom footprint is right here. All you so, need is time. <laughs> yeah, all you need is time. So <laughs> what we're what we want to do is we want to go and look at the footprint that we're going to use and confirm that the pads are 5.1 millimeters on center horizontally and 3.7 millimeters on center vertically. So and you're saying in the, in the, in the footprint that we currently have. Yeah, go back to the footprint you had. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that. Control Z. I, I tried that. It's not working. Without it selected, now do Control Z. Oh, no, I'm not going to give it to you. Nope. Oh, well. Well, let me look in my footprints. Maybe I have that one. Um, TS1187? Of course not. No, it, was, it used to be a TS30 something. Was it three thirty? It was a TL... 3342? I thought is that right? I, don't know. I can't see. Oh, oh no, no, that's not that that shows the wrong thing. Um I thought I it was know. a TS something or other. I thought it was a TL, but button, button switch SMD. SMD. It was know, at the very bottom. TL 3342. Yep. Yeah. So double click that for okay. a second. Now we have to go and we actually have to look at the footprint in the footprint editor. All right, so I'm just going to... We're not going to edit it, but we're going to go look at it in the editor so we can check the measurements. Okay. Here? Do we need the footprint editor, or can we just do it right in the PCB? It's... I. You can probably, probably do it in the PCB, but I tend to do it in the footprint editor, so I can... Let's, let's do it the way you say it, because, yeah. Uh, create, delete, and edit footprints? Yep. Or footprint lab? Yeah, okay. Beep, beep. What is that bell? A bell. Yeah, I mean, I, I should have, I should have rephrased the question. What is the meaning of that particular ring of that bell? Uh, a whim. <laughs> I mean, I usually hit uh, the bell at right? the start of the class, but but yeah, I just this is a while you're awaiting bell. Right, that exactly. <laughs> Did it okay? So now go to button and and button SMD switch and, SMD, and then all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. TL three three four two. So now what you want to do is you want to use your ruler. Little ruler thing. Go to center to the center. Key. Yep. Except so that's got... what. Well, it... I said, okay, I wasn't sure if you were on the center of those two things. Yeah, so it tells me point... I'm on the center because of the circle thingy, I guess. Yep. And then while we're at it, let's measure the other one, which is center from there over to center to there. So that says this button that we're using currently is six. 
by 3.8 for the center of the pad to center of the pad. Now, if we go look at the foot, uh, go look at the data sheet again. 6.4 we'll by, yeah. Uh, data sheet. Yeah, that ain't going to fit. Yep, exactly. So now you have two choices. The we obvious can find the we... TSA 1187A footprint somewhere. Well, you can actually go, go see if there's a footprint already in KiCad. So we looked at the. There's not. You know, I searched for it. No, no, no. Not for that exact one. But let's go back to the list of footprints oh, okay. that we have access okay. to. And that doesn't quite look like it. What about well, the. Measure 30... it anyway, because, you know, it looks can be deceiving. Yeah, but I was going to say, just look at the 33. I would, I would just single click on the other TS ones. That's even bigger. Oh. Huh. 33. Why doesn't it keep my ruler? Seven. Yeah, this could be the same size. Seven. Seven. So what else we got? Okay, so no, that's all right. So here's here's the next thing that I do. Um, and uh, so I go back to the um, the jcsc page where we got the data sheet from and i look to see what the the actual manufacturer's part number is all right that's i should have opened this in a new window oh i did automatically okay so you want the manufacturer's part number which is the ts-1187 that of that whole thing copy open up another browser window and you're going to go to uh, I'm gonna have to look this Grab one. Grabcad, Snap EDA, which one? Yeah, Snap EDA. That's the one I use. This is a great resource. Um, they maintain a huge library of symbols and they got it? Yep, right there. And you'll notice over well. We've already gone by it. That's all right. Don't worry. I'll go back. That's all right. You don't have to. I like people to notice things. Hang on. So if you get a set of search results with a lot of choices, look over on the right side and it'll tell you what data is available. So there's a symbol. There's a footprint. There's also a 3D model, which is kind of cool. So you know that not only do they have the part, but they actually have the different representations that we want to be using. The thing we're looking for which primarily you're going to be looking for footprints from here. Um, but sometimes you also want the symbol. Um, and it's great if you also can get lucky and get the 3D model. It just makes the 3D viewer look kind of cool. And downloads auto import. What's auto import? Uh, we're not going to be using that tonight, but they have a tool that you can install on your desktop. Oh, gotcha. Okay. To, to pull directly from uh, this, so so like key oh, side tangent because I see this word and I want to I want to talk <coughs> about it. Um, Heather at work, who I've been telling you guys about for months, and I've been trying to get to come to the meetings. She's our rock star hardware person, and she pulled me aside the other day and showed me what she's doing in Autodesk Fusion 360, and it is badass. She can make a change to a board she's working on. And not only is the board in in Fusion and the 3D model in Fusion, but the 3D model of the housing that's going around it, the you know, the plastic housing is also in Fusion. And it'll tell you, it'll show you visibly whether the changes she makes are still going to fit in the housing. It's pretty awesome. She's nice. got all the cool toys. All right. Yeah, and, and I, I will tell you um most of the people i know who used to use eagle and when autodesk bought eagle and tried to integrate it into fusion they all went crazy and the number of them that have left eagle and gone to keycad is actually pretty impressive <laughs> I have to go get my other computer unless somebody else wants to download it because my login is not saved on this one. There is a key uh, dot keycad mod 
uh, that lists this very part, would that work for a foot footprint? Yeah, that's that that is the footprint file. Okay, uh, I will. We were just gonna it. we were just gonna download that foot that particular file directly from. Yeah, right. but, but I don't have a login. For a login. Okay. This one uh, is on GitHub, so yeah, I posted it to the Zoom. Okay. Channel. To the to yeah. the Zoom chat. Hang on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll post it to the Discord chat as well. Yeah, I mean, if you end up doing a lot of design, it's good to just sign up for a free account and yep. use a dummy username and a dummy email address and a dummy password. And you know, I don't know why, but my um, uh, Discord's frozen up, so I can't post it there. Great, because I can't get to the chat. Oh, there's the chat. Okay. <laughs> So yes, raw. Do I want it raw? Is that all the mod file is? It's just text. Yep, Save just text. Out. Okay. Get out of my face, window. All right. So I'm gonna put that in my main downloads because it's the only place I'll be able to find it. And of course, it saves it as a text file. Dot txt so i have to rename that stupid how do i i don't even know what i'm doing now i don't want to open it in notepad i want to i want to yeah why does it do these things to me i'm going to save it again and see if I can change it to all files. There we go. That makes more sense. No, I don't want to save it as .text. Anybody? What operating system are you running on? Fucking Windows. 10 or 11? 10. OK. Um, 11's just garbage. Go, back to, go, go find your text file and rename it. That's all. <sighs> Command line? That's even worse. No, 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 no. Directly from your browser or directly I, from your, your your file explorer thing. Wherever you I, found the file. Dang. 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 <sighs> Downloads. Where is it? Oh, it's... God damn it. What is it called again? There we go. Copy here, move here. Okay, rename. Right click, rename, rename. There you go. Get rid of and the text. it doesn't, there's no text showing up here because uh, stupid Windows is not showing extensions. How far down the rabbit hole are we going to go with this? I don't you want just this open class. it up and save as? Save it as a different uh, extension? No! <laughs> Am I the only one that hates Windows? No, mm. you're the only one who, who leaves it with all the defaults. I mean, That's because I don't on. use it. I have never, it's like the very first thing I do after I install Windows and get it up and running is I go in and open up File Explorer on some random directory and I go and change all those things like show the extension, show hidden files in a different thing, show empty directories. <laughs> Just to uh, uh, spoil the results, I was able to get it work to work. That is not spoiling anything. Um... That's just saying you're faster than Bob. <sighs> Stupid windows. That's what was for dinner. What? I was asking Betsy what she had for dinner. Oh. <laughs> Mexican. Ooh. Yeah. They hit okay. the spot. So so now we're gonna what? We're gonna import. Actually No, uh, just copy so oh, sorry. That's right. So footprints are just files. Right. So as long as you copy it into a directory where you already have footprints it'll just be there you don't okay. have to like add it to a library so I which is where have... you see uh actually there's a way to do it in schematics so you see if you go back to the components list on your schematics you see where it says the footprint um the footprint column for your switch if you hit the library yes. button and yes. you swap the footprint out, it'll automatically swap it 
on your PCB. Yeah, so, what, what what Bob is saying though is he doesn't know what folder or directory uh, that footprint was from, and so um, this comes back to uh, go back to your root page of KiCad, the main launch page. The one I never use. Yeah, the one you never use. No, you you went past it by like three. There you go. Um, <clears throat> And you can go under preferences and uh oh, is it not letting you click on anything? It's not letting me click on anything. Yeah. KeyCAD. Oh, because being, I have this dialog box open maybe? Yeah. They have so many modal dialog boxes. It's kind of scary. See if you can get preferences now. Okay. There you go. Um, configure paths. So that's just where I need to drop it somewhere. Under no, footprints. you want to find your you want to find your user one. So that's the primary one. But don't you have a user template? User third party three D models. You can stick it in that footprints directory, but you should have a user footprint directory uh, somewhere. Second to bottom. That's the template directory. We, we haven't really done anything with templates in this class. So I don't have a user footprints directory. No. So I'm going to drop it in there for now for the purposes yeah, of this class. Yeah, you can just drop it in there for now. But yeah, it's, you know, um, but and I'm not, you know, and I'm not sure because I didn't go through the, in, the generic install of KiCad 6. Um, because I've been using KiCad for ever. Um, and so mine already has all the user versions of all the root or all the system folders. Um, and they sit in my, on Windows, they sit in the documents folder area. It creates a KiCad within documents. But anyway, so yes, yeah, so if you go to... We could have had a whole lesson in the beginning on how to how to properly configure the Keycad, software yeah. but yeah we didn't do that so here we yeah, are so if you go uh, to yeah so bob if you just go to you know e keycad 6.0 share keycad footprints and drop it there then it'll just you'll already have it i'll go, I'll go deeper i'll put it into buttons yeah you can but do that switch too. smd second one okay yeah, and just add it to that one all right so that's done. Well, so now you can actually assign it to the, which is what display was doing. So if you go back to the dialog box and now click the, the libraries option, you should now see that. There it is. There it is. And so double click it and there you go. Um, okay, so now we have chosen a button that, that makes sense and we, we've got the yeah. Part number four. Let me double check to make sure I got the right one in there. I probably did. Yeah. 31884 something. Yeah. Okay. So, because we've gone and changed the footprint, at some point we will have to go back to the schematic, update footprint, or yeah, update from schematic and then update footprints. And then we might have to do some adjustments of the wires right. or traces to get those to line up. And then we will have to regenerate the Gerbers or regenerate the placement file. Yep. <laughs> Let's keep working our way through this task first, and then we'll go and carry all these changes forward. Yep. So I don't know if I'm going to find anything here. I don't even know what a PCM12 is. Hey, SMD slide switches ROHS extended. Let's go to basic. Ooh, what do we got? We got nothing. So that is an SPDT switch. Slide switch? So we specify you can slide, try slide. See if it's in there. Braden, have you like looked at things first before you actually design your boards to see if the parts are there, or do you usually design it? Uh, because I do my own fab, it's not an issue. Okay. Um I mean, I make sure I can get the parts, but it, for me, it, it comes down to more 
about um, a can I get the parts from anybody mm -hmm. and then B do the parts have certain specifications like so if I'm if I'm trying to use an LDO a, a low dropout um, uh, power converter thing mm -hmm. you know it takes five volts to get 3.3 that kind of thing mm -hmm. um, there are I no sure SPDT it's... anything in basic parts Ooh, that's kind of a bummer uh, back to Kevin's question, um, because I'm doing my own fab, or if you're doing hand assembly, another mm -hmm. right, I look more at the specifications. Does the does the LDO put out 150 milliamps or 500 milliamps? Um, if it's a diode, what's the forward voltage drop? Okay. Right. If it's you know, because that's where you end up, especially when you start playing with diodes, it becomes really important. If you've only got 3.3 volts, you don't want one that's got a 400 millivolt drop on it because that takes you from 3.3 down to 2.9. Right. Um, so I'm looking at the specifications of the parts more than, you know, okay. availability for a specification second. Right, makes sense. Um, but then I can get them from anybody. So sometimes I'm getting from um, LCSC, sometimes I'm getting them from DigiKey, sometimes I'm getting from Mauser. Sometimes I'm custom ordering them from the manufacturer, which is what I do with most of my LEDs now. Um. So I think I, I think we might be stuck with an extended part. I think there's no uh, switch available that is a basic part. I tried like going to components and just selecting switches and then filtering for basic parts and getting nothing. Like at all. So we want a toggle switch, right? No, oh, slide switch is right. Toggle. I don't think you want a toggle. What's the slide, slide switch? switch okay. Yeah. What do we get for options there? Is there any? These are all extended parts. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Okay. Nothing basic. Okay, that's cool. So let's go back to the beginning and pick the PCM twelve that first came up since. We're stuck with extended parts anyway, and see if that's going to be the right thing. I was so excited when I saw that. Mm -hmm. That's it. It looks right. Um, do we need to measure it, or can we trust PCM12 being in the? I probably would measure it, but OK. So this will only take a second, right? What's the most important measurement? The path. The spacing of those three pins. Oh, actually, or the two holes. The two holes? What holes? Yeah. So if you look at the, um, the diagram on the right. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. That's the footprint. So, so the pads and have, the holes all matter. Yeah, so it's going to have two little round holes in the bottom of it, and then it's going to have two pads on either side and three pads for the switch. Okay. And where is the distance between the holes? It's, if you look at it, see there's uh, two lines coming straight down off the holes, off the centers. Is this it? Yep. 0. 0.118? Yep. That's inches, three millimeters. Okay. So three millimeters, we'll go back into, oh boy. Just Close click the library. Uh, actually, ahead. do me a favor. Click the library. Back when we were in the in the dialog box. Where was the dialog box again? Uh, edit tools, symbol fields. Edit this symbol one? fields. Yeah. So if you click the little, yeah, click the library thing there. When this thing is open, do we have access to the ruler anywhere? We don't, do we? I mean, we don't have access to the ruler symbol. Or do we? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah no. we do. Okay. So yeah, you could zoom way in and then use the ruler. Which one's the ruler? Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah. And then so we want to measure between these two. Woohoo! Look at that. It's three. That's How do you pull up the ruler? What? How do you pull up the ruler? The it was all the way over on the, the left the... side. It looks like a ruler on a 45 degree right there. Oh, yeah. All right. 
Um, and by the way, Bob, the reason why it didn't want to center on those dots is because your grid is kind of weird. I don't but care about my grid. That's true. All right. So, those so almost three are, there too. Yeah. And then what's the next one over? The next one over is... One and, like a half. one and a half. So now we go back to the the data sheet and hmm. so three, should be three one and a half and one and a half. There we go. So it's the same. All right. Uh, we do we care about the thickness of the pads? Unless it's glaringly different, probably not. The uh, I measure the side pads. They are twice as thick as the ones that they specify, I think. No, hold it, hold it. Before there's a difference between what they specify. So go back to the data sheet, Bob. Yep. And scroll. That maybe down. I'm reading a schematic. Look right. around look around for the actual footprint, recommended footprint. Because what you're looking at is PC mapping, right? Yeah. Or is that the recommended footprint? That's that's all we got. This is only okay, a two page. Cool. So I mean, I'm it's got all the, the measurements. One that has right? one dot thirteen, I think. Where's that? One. Here, okay. Yeah, that's me I think that's measuring the pad on the bottom left uh, pad. No, I think that's measuring the distance between the two pads. Yeah, that's the that's and... the gap between the two pads. So those pads, <laughs> just as an example. Those four, Bob, can you go back? I was going to show you how to read that. So those pads, those, you know, the two on the left and the two on the right, okay? They are one millimeter across and they are 0.8 millimeters tall. So you kind of have to piece this together from different places. So yeah, yeah exactly. one millimeter across. That side shows you the, the X thing and then the other one on this side shows you the Y component. So those pads are 0.8, Point, 0 .8 by right. one. All right. So, if so you then we're to go over here and you were to zoom way in on one of those pads and use the ruler. We can see that's Close enough. 0.76. And then going the other direction, we're probably like 0.9 or something. Uh, it's yeah. 0.1 and point, uh, 0 0.8. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So that exactly matches up with the with the actual data sheet. And we'll take it a step further and measure it between the pads as we know that's 113, right? Ah. 1.36. 1. 1. Oh, a little bit. And, and what is it on the data sheet? I thought it was 1.13. Yep, so they're a little closer I've, together. I've got 1.14. Or okay. 1.4. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, and and here's the thing, if it's if it's too far off, JLC will kick the order back and say, "Hey, this doesn't match." Oh, wow. Yeah. Not at order time. They'll kick it back when they're inspecting it, uh, prior to prior to manufacture. Okay. And so we check the top pad distances between each other. Yeah, we already checked the top pad distances. Oh. They all lined okay. up. Yep. So we, we know we have a good part. Now we just need a JLC part number for what we have. We don't need to modify anything. I'm trusting this will be fine. Yep. So there's your part number. Where's my... You closed it. You closed the dialog box. Why so would I do that? It. No, I didn't. There it is. Oh, it's buried underneath. You got to close that. Okay. And it moved the part number column over again. I'd like it back over here. Okay. All right. So after all that time, we have three parts to find. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? You still need to find the LEDs. Yeah. And, and did, that's these are it. five by fives. Is that what we settled on? Yeah. You, you chose the big ones, which I personally would not have done, but that's all right. <laughs> Well, let's see if they have them available. Uh, WS twenty eight twelve B. Dash fifty fifty. Okay. Here. You're looking for a dash fifty fifty. 
There's an XL5050 RGBC WS2812B. Woo. That's underextended. They don't have. Well, yeah, got to specify basic if you want. None of them are. Wow. Drop the B. Holy shit. Um, Type in SK6812, I think it is. Yes. And see if that's under basic. Probably right. not. No, nope, doesn't look it. That's how they so, get yeah. you. So go back to the WS2812. Um, Just so I I'd know how to spot it, where'd you pull the uh, the WS2812? The, where'd you find that, I guess? What do you I mean, where did I find it? The, the name, the WS2812. Well, I think that's what Bob had in his... It, in it's his... what we decided on during the design process. Oh, I have something different. Okay. Oh, what did you choose? Uh, PLCC4. Well, this says PLCC4 oh. also. Um, yeah. Mine doesn't have that. Hmm. Weird. So a, a WS2812 is the pretty much the... the most generic term for an addressable RGB LED. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, I use the term addressable RGB LED as opposed to RGB LED because mm -hmm. an RGB LED traditionally refers to a discrete component yep. with no special functionality in it. So it just, it literally has, you know, positives and negatives and that's it. Um, whereas an addressable LED has smarts inside it. And that's what we're using here. And that's what's been used on the Tree of Life badge as well as the um, Tarot badge. So I don't know the difference between a XL5050 RGBC WS2812B. Is that? Every, well, see, the thing is, is, is technically WS2812 is the part number from a very specific manufacturer. Okay. The, the original. Oh, XL and is so just Zinglite. Okay. That's yeah, so everybody else tags other stuff onto it. To okay. Make it one. Now, do you want to go with a 50-50, which is pretty big, or do you want to use... Do I want to go with something that's on my screen, or do I want to rewire the PCB? What What do you think the answer to that is going to be? Uh, okay. Tough one. <laughs> I don't know why we... I don't remember that far back as to why we chose the 50-50. Maybe because that was easily available in KiCad already. Um, I want to I want to stop here for a second and uh, uh, confirm with everybody because you know these things were originally scheduled for an hour and we're a little bit over an hour and I'm going to let everybody vote. Do we stop where we are and continue next week or do we keep going? I might drop out because my mind's about to explode. Yeah, I was going to say I've, I'm probably <laughs> about as far as I can be for tonight. Yeah. Okay. Well, and the, and, yeah, and the truth is, is, yeah, and the truth is is that. We've already shown you the process yeah. for locating the parts, updating yep. the, the, the data within the schematic. Um, you just have to keep doing it until you've gotten every single part assigned. And then the next step would be to then go back to the, go back to the, the PCB, update maybe, from the schematic. Maybe we take the, the five minutes, maybe we take like the two or three, five minutes now and go through the process of adjusting for something that we changed. Yeah. Just the so button, that yeah. that's on record. Yeah, the button's a good example of that. So, okay. So back to PCB editor, right? No, go back to your schematic first and save and close out that dialog box. Okay. Now you can go to your PCB. Okay. And tools update. Oh, I just used the menus. <laughs> I have a new appreciation for all this. <laughs> you, you like really? You have some kind of feeling of what what I was going through for uh, all those I, many I many hours I mean, over the last it, two years? <laughs> yeah, this is this is insane. All right, so work. first I, I realized the tree is still here, so I got to get rid of that. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back to my schematic and delete the stupid tree, which was which is what this? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's that thing. Just say tree. Yes, yeah, custom tree. Yeah, kill the tree. Yeah, kill it. Save. Tree. PCB update, and I also hit Control B to undo the fill, just so you can see stuff. 
All right. And now closed. And what we should now see is where are those? Yeah, the buttons are up at the top. And we'll notice things don't quite line up like they used to. And you might have to highlight the traces to see that. Uh, do do yourself a quick favor and verify indeed that uh, we have the right switches. Oops. Let's look the switch these, E. I believe I previewed it. These are the ones. They look the same as mine. Oh, just a second. Does, where does it say? Down at the bottom, link library TS one one eight seven. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, cool. Um, if you if it for some reason it wasn't, then you simply go back up to tools. And instead of doing update from schematic, you do um, update footprints. So you're you're having a problem. Just delete that and rewire it. So the problem that we're running into is because the button is now narrower than it used to be, the traces connecting left to right were too long. Hmm. So we're just uh, reapplying those traces. Today. X. What is X? X, X is wire. X is trace, yeah. Okay. Do you want the I mean, I don't see visual overlap. Is it important that the traces go to the middle rather yes. than yes? Yeah. Yeah, you'll start getting errors going forward. Um, you'll get, you know, unconnected trace and some other error messages. And that's go a good do... way to test it really, is if it doesn't look like it's changed, go ahead and run DRC. And it'll tell you, hey, I oh. got 24 errors. Yeah. Where are my 24 errors? Yeah, where are your? Oh, oh, it's, yeah, see, it's now all these unconnected items. Oh, things. the ground. Yeah. Redo the ground. <laughs> Run DRC again. No errors? It's fine. Okay. So that that's the process for minor adjustments based on a part change. Everybody good and for this week? And, yeah. Yeah, and then you go and regenerate your Gerbers and regenerate your position files. And We'll start from here next week because there's still a few more parts to grab. And I just want to go through the complete process. Mm. Next is, week is, is the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah. How does everybody feel about the day after Thanksgiving? Is anybody traveling? Anybody not able to make it? I think I will be traveling. Um, I mean, it's going to be more of the same. There's not much more than uploading this to JLC PCB, right? Uh, well, the last step, going through the steps. The last step we haven't done is actually generating the bomb. Yeah, the, we we got to spend some time talking about the the bomb and the position file and generating mm -hmm. them in JLC format. So maybe we wait two weeks. Just okay, I, we skip I, next week because of the holiday. Yeah, I mean, I can try to make it. I'll just not be on mic or camera. I'm not doing like, anything. But... I can be here if y'all want to be here, or I can skip it if y'all want to skip. Oh, well, could we do like a makeup session for like? me since I've missed a couple and then that way nobody else is missing anything. Yeah. Possibly. I mean yeah. If that works better. Yeah. So are are you saying you're around and want to get together Friday? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going anywhere. I ain't driving nowhere. All right. So I will be doing this on Friday and whoever wants to show up can show up. Okay. And maybe we won't move too far forward. We'll keep working on what we're working on. And and, and if you do miss it It'll eventually, I promise, I'll release the recordings. Okay. That works. Yeah. This All is right. good. This Sounds is good. good. All right. All right. Thank right, you cool. for being here, everybody. And yeah. uh, this is great. Thanks, Bob. Enjoy great. your Thanksgiving. Oh, we didn't talk about Monday. Um, what are we doing Monday? Probably. That's a good far. question. I'm going to stop recording. How do I do that? <laughs> Important. Stop recording. Okay.